the morning. And uh, of course, uh, I would like to thank and congratulate the committee and the organizers of the Asian and Third Global Wound Conference uh, 2021, which is titled Wound Wars, May the Cure Be With You. And of course, I would like to give a special thanks to my dearest friend, my close friend, Dr. Hari Krishna Nair, for uh, inviting me. And of course, it's a privilege of uh, including me in the program as a lecturer and a speaker. So um, the topic that was um, <clears throat> assigned to me is about pressure injuries, hospital acquired injuries for patients uh, who has COVID-19. And this is a very timely topic because uh, of the current experience and current situation that we have now. So uh, these are my common disclaimers, uh, the contents presented in these slides, uh, this webinar and then this Congress is uh, mainly based on the opinions of the speaker, my best practice experience here uh, in the Philippines and does not necessarily reflect the opinion of any institution or any affiliations that I am with right now. They are also for scientific discussions only and not recommended for off-label recommendations. Uh, there are images of uh, people, patients, and products that are also included in my slides, but these are for the purpose of the lecture only and uh, doesn't breach any um, data privacy law that is uh, indicated here uh, in the country or in the Philippines. Um, some of the point of discussions that uh, I will be discussing on the lecture includes, of course, is to share the current situation of patients with COVID-19 who had pressure injuries and, of course, other related injuries while they are in the hospital or while they are confined. To share and discuss the preventive and treatment options for certain type of injuries in a given situation during the hospital confinement of the patient and to be able to discuss not only pressure injuries, but also other types of injuries that a COVID-19 patient may acquire during their hospitalization. So um, COVID-19 and critical care, um, it, it is a journey and it is a challenge for both uh, the healthcare providers and of course to the patient. Due to the pandemic, uh, number one is of course the turnaround time when it comes to attending the patients in an ICU setting or in a critical care setting. Um, became longer. So the quality of care is, of course, um, affected. And particularly to special services or to other treatment modalities and other allied healthcare uh, services that we do provide to the patient. And the people who are at high risk of developing pressure injuries and other skin injuries is not only the patient, but also the healthcare workers as well. And this uh, is evidenced by, of course, the PPE-related injuries that healthcare providers have. Uh, most of them uh, who work at the hospital for the longer period of time because of the prolonged time they're wearing these PPEs, especially those who wear uh, N95, respirator masks, uh, hazmat, and uh, any any other PPEs that we have now. Now, um. The use of personal protective equipment or these PPEs has become one of the major risk factors also uh, for the healthcare workers. Um, quality of care was also compromised due to the uh, lack of healthcare providers because they themselves become infected with the pandemic or the COVID the virus. And so uh, it includes uh, staffing, uh, nurse patient ratios, and of course the the, the care given to the patient is uh, also, uh, uh, the quality of care is also compromised because of these factors. Now, um, we have been um, discussing and we have been dealing with pressure injuries uh, from longest period of time for now and uh, up to now. And uh, I think during these past few years, there has been a lot of talks and a lot of um, discussions on how to prevent and manage such injuries. But the challenge is now 
when the pandemic came or when the COVID-19 virus came. So um, pressure injuries, as we know, and as I cite the definition I have uh, referred to given by the National Pressure Injury Advisory Panel that was revised uh, just uh, the last 2019 is that it's a localized damage uh, injury to the skin on a pressure uh, area, pressure area, where in um, uh, over a bony prominence, but may also be related to a medical departure. Okay, so that's their definition. And I think uh, on this Congress, there's also a lot of talks pertaining to pressure injury per se. And there have been an addition to the different classification of pressure injuries or to the stages, which includes, of course, your medical device related pressure injuries, which are pressure injuries that is caused by medical devices that we use at the hospital. And of course, uh, your deep tissue injuries. Now, um, when it comes to the uh, COVID patients, uh, most of them, of course, are also affected by the medical device attached to them because of the prolonged use uh, uh, because of the current situation that uh, they are right now. And we will be discussing them as we go on with the slides. Now, um, it also includes not only pressure injuries, but also other types of skin injuries that we must give attention to. Uh, this includes, of course, your moisture-associated skin dermatitis, your medical adhesive, related skin injuries, incontinence-associated dermatitis. And of course, there has been a lot of uh, incidences when it comes to extravasations and catheter-related catheter, uh, skin injuries and infection. Now, um, when it comes to your hospital-acquired um, injuries, um, we, we always um, look into pressure injuries. And because it is one of the most common injuries that we see at the hospital. Uh, the awareness when it comes to pressure injuries nowadays has become very, very uh, big in terms of the updates and the knowledge that the healthcare provider has. And there has been a lot of talks about pressure injuries. And it is what we always look to, you know, the one that we look for, the one that we surveil and we do surveillance, the one that we do the monitoring. We have assessment tools and pathways and guidelines pertaining to pressure. But um, the reality is there are also other injuries that happens to the patients, but mislabeled as pressure injuries wherein they are not actually pressure injuries. So thus, uh, come to a, um, a uh, particular situation wherein we misdiagnose or we mislabeled, mislabeled pressure injuries as uh, or mislabeled other types of injuries as pressure injuries, thus the treatment and management is also um, might be wrong or may not be accurate. Now, um, um, medical device related pressure injuries, IADs, or your incontinence associated dermatitis, your medical adhesive related skin injuries, or your MARSI are among those injuries that we must pay attention to also, not only pressure injuries. Now, your um, incontinence associated dermatitis are very common to patients who have incontinence problems and it, it happens to extremes of age not only to, to, the, to the average age of a patient in a hospital but uh, patients who are uh, elderly patients uh, extremes of age of course uh, patients who are of the younger age the units and the infants most likely would have this type of injury and now, because of the COVID-19, uh, there has been an increase uh, of this incidence. Uh, not to mention, of course, the medical adhesive-related skin injuries because of the, the, the attachments that we, we give to the patients or the medical device that has adhesives that we attach to the patients because of, number one, monitoring the patient, number two, for the treatments that we give. Now, as we all know, uh, these are the common contributory factors for a patient who may have, or a person who may have a pressure injury. Uh, it includes, of course, number one is the pressure, uh, which is impaired mobility, impaired activity, impaired sensory perception. Um, when it comes to tissue tolerance, we have two, which is your extrinsic factors and intrinsic factors, which includes for extrinsic, so moisture, shear, and friction. 
intrinsic factors include suppression, oxygen delivery, skin temperature, and everything. Now, if you want to prevent uh, pressure injuries or manage pressure injuries, you just have to look into uh, factors to, to mainly prevent uh, pressure injuries or how to treat or manage them. But how can we uh, prevent things by avoiding these different factors or taking to in, taking these factors into consideration when your patient is uh, positioned on a prone position on a longer period of time and the vitals are compromised. So it's a diff different thing. Uh, it's a big challenge. So when it comes to impaired mobility, of course, um, activity, sensory perception. Uh, for COVID patients, you know, because of the, crit the critical condition and the present condition of the patient, with unstable vital signs for the patient, repositioning as scheduled is, of course, a challenge. No? So there are times where in uh, the, the turning for every two hours or as advised by the doctors are not done because of these situations that are in hand. So uh, because of the unstable situation or the unstable uh, condition of the patient, uh, there has been a challenge on the turning schedule. So we have to think of other ways on how to prevent you know, uh, pressure injuries or to lessen the injury that we, we want that uh, might happen to the patient. Of course, other activities or related therapies and range of motion exercises are also limited. There are many contraptions attached to the patient. This pertains to the medical devices that we attach to the patients or the treatments that we give to the patient. But of course, this is for the benefit of the patient because of the present condition. When it comes to moisture, shear, and friction, of course, um, there is an increase in I IAD incontinence associated dermatitis incidence due to the turnaround time in attending to incontinence episodes, nurse patient ratio, availability of nurse assistants, and other allied health professionals. Most are also infected by the virus. So during this time, um, the workload of nurses versus to the number of patients. So if we have one is to two ratio for an ICU patient before in a critical care setting, uh, now it can be one is to five or one is to six. And because most of them, nurses, doctors have been infected with the virus also. So we have to deal with those types of situations. Now, attending to patients when it comes to incontinence episode is also a challenge because you cannot always go to the patient with COVID. No? And again, uh, the resources is one of the things that we have to consider, there has been a time wherein the resources of PPE has been into a scars. So there's no enough PPE around. There's no PPE uh, supplies at the hospital. So we really have to, to, uh, to manage on how we are going to minimize the entry to the patient and, of course, to maximize the use of these PPEs. Some of the contributory factors, um, of course, uh, patients are referred to in a patient or a dietitian for faster wound healing. There has been no issue of oxygen unavailability in the hospital because of we have, I think, enough supplies during that time. But again, the challenge is the availability of ventilator machines, oxygen concentrators, and high flow devices because of the surge of the number of patients. There is an increase in uh, MARSI incidence or your medical adhesive related skin injuries because of the number of contractions attached to the extremities of the patients that have medical adhesive. So mainly skin tears in particular. So we have a lot of skin tears. Um, this is um, a data that I got from a study or a journal from uh, that was done in Japan. Uh, were in the prevalent state in facial injuries for patients who has COVID in a critical care area, 69% uh, uh, on the bridge of the nose incidence, no? uh, on the ears is 30%, uh, chin area 20%, and on the cheeks is 20%, which later I will also share what is our experience pertaining to this type of incident. Now we have to consider common locations of injury. So mainly for patients who, who have contractions in the facial area, uh, occipital area because of the prolonged position or on the facial area because of the proning position of the patient, 
on the ears, on the cheeks, in the brachial tube areas, uh, occipital area, sacrum, of the heels. And of course, we would like to consider other anatomical areas of the body wherein there is uh, pressure, uh, mainly on the bony areas. Also. So uh, among the COVID cases that we have, like I said earlier, there has been an increase in medical adhesive related skin injuries or your skin tears. Common causes is frequent application of medical adhesive devices on the same location and moisture are trapped in the medical adhesive devices. So prevention and treatment, of course, use skin barriers prior to application of the device, ensure that the area is um, well dry, you know, no excess moisture before the application of the transparent film or tape or any medical adhesive device. Uh, follow as much as possible appropriate guidelines and protocols on medical adhesive use and removal. And so, for, for example, how long would that adhesive tape must stay on the patient? You know, there is, a, of course, a manufacturer's guide on it. Um, among the medical device-related pressure injuries uh, that we have seen for a patient that has COVID is, of course, due to monitoring device cables and attachments to the patient. This is because of the prolonged use of such monitoring devices for patients who have COVID, uh, trap moisture in the devices such as your BP cups. And uh, there's, I, I mean, skin sweats, uh, solutions that was poured into the patient's body, edematous extremities, um, cables uh, that is attached to the patients were, uh, were present at the patient's back, you know, underneath the patient's body or in any body part that may cause added uh, pressure uh, to the patient. And again, it might result to an injury. Um, prevention and treatment, I would advise is to monitor uh, the, the, these attached devices to the patient, uh, reattaching them from time to time so that we may offload that area and uh, ensure the cable wires of the monitoring devices are not placed within the patient's pressure points. Um, some, uh, we do use the fly uh, hyperoxygenated oils or moisturizers uh, for area or for skin of the patients that are totally dry to, to keep them moist to avoid skin breaks. Now, pressure injuries due to prolonged toning uh, and also to medical devices and of course, uh, due to the present uh, condition of the patient, uh, common are on the eyebrows, uh, nose bridge, there on the occipital area, the ears of the patients where the cannulas are applied and tracheal tubes you know, uh, on the mouth, we got mucosal membrane injuries. And of course, uh, um, some skin injuries as well, some other skin injuries such as skin tears because of the pains. Now, uh, among the causes is again, uh, due, to, due to the unstable condition of the patients with COVID-19. Uh, of the proning, and we all know that proning is one of the um, uh, main uh, uh, components uh, when it comes to treating patients with COVID because of the lung expansion and the when it comes to uh, the breathing of the patient to make them stable or to assist the patient when it comes to their respiration. Now, um, attached medical devices which are placed in a bony, bony prominent area would basically result with a pressure injury because of the pressure and the patient we have there. So what we have done is we have an improvised proning pillow where you can see there are certain holes uh, on it when we apply it to the patient, there is an offload on the area where there is um, pressure. And there is also an area there or a place where the cables or tubes can be applied to prevent it on uh, causing injury to the patient's face. So for patients who are in a prone position, uh, we place this pillow. Uh, application of hydrocolloids or softening foams prior to application of high flow devices or CPAP devices and other types of face masks, uh, facial masks, cannulas, uh, uh, is done to the patient. And again, application of skin barriers is also uh, advised. These are the common treatments, basic treatments that we give to the patients if we see this type of injury. So for stage one injuries, we do apply skin cleansers, moisturizers, barriers, oils, lotions, creams, and of course, as much as possible, if the patient may tolerate turning, then we do a turning. 
and uh, a good turning schedule is thus provided. For stage two pressure injuries, we do have hydrocolloids, skin cleansers, hydrofibers, alginates, and everything. And IAD, it's very important that you have skin barriers and cleansers. We do also apply zinc oxide cream as long as you um, know how to remove and properly apply these devices. For MDRPI, we make sure that proper medical device selection and application is well taught to the healthcare provider and to the caregiver of the patient. We also review our policies and guidelines pertaining to adhesive removers, adhesive tapes, uh, when it comes to the selection of what we're going to use to the patient. Now, when it comes to quality improvement measures, we make sure that we do review um, uh, and create such tools to assist the healthcare providers when it comes to, to monitoring patients who are at high risk of developing such injuries. And we do have this current uh, policies and guidelines, but when the COVID uh, has struck the country, we need to revise and create new norms and to be able to adapt to what is uh, happening to the patient and to the situation in the hospital as well. So uh, it includes standardization of treatments uh, and management for certain injuries, such as pressure injuries and of course to other types of injuries, uh, past training, dissemination of policies and guidelines to the hospital, to the institution, that this is what we're going to do now, this is the current situation. And during that time, we have to frequently revise and uh, make sure that everything is in progress or everything is working. If not, then remove it and then apply a new technique. Um, reviewing the skills, of course, of the healthcare providers when it comes to taking care of such injuries is also a, a big help and um, a big issue. Uh, we make sure that a wood nurse is always available on these areas. But provided, again, because of the availability of PPE and again, because of the risk of also infecting themselves from COVID-19, there is a scheduled visit to the patient. Unlike before, when there's no COVID, they can visit every day or they can visit anytime they want. But during this time, we have to consider, of course, patients who are not COVID positive. So uh, when they go to a patient with COVID, they cannot go to a patient, a regular patient. So visit to a COVID patient is... Um, scheduled visit. So this, again, reflects to the turnaround time on attending patients. Now, um, in conclusion, again, uh, health practitioners must only focus on what is the current and common injuries for patients in the critical care areas, but also consider other skin injuries that can be uh, a complicated problem in the future, especially for patients who have COVID. Um, Marcy, IAD, and pressure injuries may have similar similarities in terms of its manifestations and appearance, but we must closely look on the distinct etiology of each to determine the correct management and treatment. Certain guidelines and protocols can be a great help, not only for health practitioners, but also to the patient and his family because of the expected good outcome. And I think that is my last slide. These are my references. And thank you very much for your attention. Again, thank you for inviting me, Dr. Harry. And uh, this is to show my two families right now, which is the hospital, the medical city, and of course the university where I'm teaching now. Uh, I would like to, of course, uh, inspire these new uh, nurses for the future because uh, definitely we need them right now for this pandemic. Thank you very much again and hope you'll be having a great day.